Hi, welcome to Soju Technical. From my previous video, I detached the optics for reviews, so I made a range to zero in again. I wanted to have the opportunity to demonstrate the zeroing principle, so I'll just do it in this video. However, I have two problems. First, I forgot the zeroing target, so I'll just use a regular paper target. The dot on the paper is the reference point where I am aiming at. Still better than nothing. When I have a fresh new setup, I check at 10 yards. 10 yards is a pretty close distance, so it's easy to track the projectiles and to see if I need to fix anything before I dial in. Even if the battle axis and aiming device have some discrepancy, blades will still go inside of a target in most cases. Alright, that was 5 shots. Let's take a look. What I'm looking for now is anything that indicates any issues from my setup. It's working fine, now I need to dial in. But 10 yard is too close to dial in accurately. So let's move on to 25. It's going to be another 5 shots. Oh, some of you might be wondering why 5 shots. So let me explain. 3 shot group is the traditional way I learned from the army too. But in terms of operator's error, the 5 shot group has better correctness than 3 shots. Also, the margin of error gets better with more data usually. Just think about 2 errors out of 5 compared to 2 out of 3. Yeah, I suck. Now, target is at 25. 25 yards is the longest distance in this range. That's not the same as 25 meters. Just saying. Alright, that's 5 shots. The second task is that I wanted to zero in as 50 yards in this 25 yard facility. I will explain a little bit of it later. If you still have no idea how zero works or plus fly after this video, check out my explanation video, hopefully that will help you. Now let's compare the groups from 10 yards and 25 yards. The 25 yard group is lower than the 10 yard group. It means blades are going down already at 25 yards. It also means this optic is not facing in with the battle. I will adjust the optic's elevation to the bow axis. But how many MOAs or clicks should I turn? I mean, my target has no guidelines that indicate how many clicks or MOAs. Alright, let's solve the first task. Note that 1 MOA is 1 inch at 100 yard. And the last group from 25 was about 4 inches below than the reference dot. So let's say 4 inches at 25 yards. We need to convert these numbers into 100 yards. 25 multiplied by 4 is 100. And 4 inches multiplied by 4 is 16 inches. That's 16 inches at 100 yards. And 1 MOA is 1 inch at 100 yards. So that's 16 MOA. That was quick, so I will just show you how we calculate it. This optic has half MOA click, so I will turn up 32 clicks. Quick note for those who get confused by up or down. When the point of impact was lower than the reference, bring the point of impact up. Make sense? Alright, the target is looking good now, let's shoot that again.
That was five shots. Let's bring the target back and see if we solve the first test. The moment of truth is coming. My trigger music right there. But the elevation is good for 25 years zero. Good job on the inch to MOA conversion. All I need to do is bring the point of impact to the left just a little bit. But as I mentioned before, I want 50 yards zero. So I'm going to bring the group down. The reason is because I want a little more flat projectile pass. I mean, zeroing distance differs by battle angle difference. For example, the 25 yard zero with this rifle setup, between 25 and 350 yards, there is about a 10 inches shift. After 25 yards, blast will be above my point of aim. Around 250, the point of impact is about 10 inch higher than my point of aim. Then it gradually moves down because of the gravity. At around 350 yards, point of aim and point of impact matches again. With 50 yards zero, however, the angle of battle and sight become more parallel than 25s. So the elevation shift of point of impact becomes less than 25 yards zero. Deviation is about 1.5 inches only throughout first and second zero distance. That's such a small shift compared to 10 inches. But the second zero distance is about 200 yards. That's 150 yards shorter than the 25 yards. There are more options like 25 meters, 25 yards, 37 meters, and etc. All these different zeroing distances are like comparing apples, oranges, and watermelon. As long as you know what you're doing, there's nothing wrong with even with 10 yards zero or 300 yards zero. You just pick one depending on your mission and your goal. Alright, I also see the elevation. Let's shoot. My barrel and optic have about 3.6 inch gaps. If the point of impact is about 1.2 inches lower than point of aim at 25 yards, that's about 50 yards zero. This is about 2.5. That would be about 75 yards zero. Guys, I just wanted to show you how 75 yards zero would look like at 25. Trust me. So I'm going to fix it quickly. I feel like I'm stressing about 50 yards too much. I don't mean for you to follow what I'm doing. We can have the same result in different ways. Sometimes we need different results too. But the principle remains the same. Hopefully I'm sharing a fundamental that you can adapt and utilize. Without knowing the basics, everything falling apart. That sucks. Oh, that reminds me of something. Mount on optic, nice and solid. If the aiming device moves around, the aiming point loses accuracy. So make sure to use a reliable system, install correctly, and check it sometimes. This optic and mount are well known for their reliability. So I haven't checked for about two years. The truth is, I installed it lawfully because I was outside without the right tools. I was like, I'll do it later, then I forgot. I finally fixed it a few days ago. That was my confession. Alright, time to shoot.
I was breathing uncomfortably and my goggles began to fog up. Hopefully this group is reasonable to estimate the average. Bad breath control. Told you I suck. But that should do 50 yards zero. Hopefully I will go to 200 yards range and tweak a little better. Going outdoors without a mask would be awesome. That was it for today. Thank you for watching. Sojuhani out.